let's begin by thinking about what our most precious possession might be. Perhaps it's our health, our family and friends, our faith, or even could it be tangible things like our house or our photos or even some special items that remind us of happy times or special achievements. Perhaps an old hand tool that belonged to our granddad or our first pair of motorcycle levers. If you've ever watched Antiques Roadshow, from time to time there is that special item which has such a moving story attached to it that the price of the item cannot and should not be measured or spoken of. It is a priceless treasure. As the object is honoured, the joy of the owner is such that we see their emotions well up and give an expression, often with tears. Usually the presenter is also deeply moved as they gently forego the usual giving of the valuation. A priceless treasure is imbued with meaning, a meaning that brings joy, great and profound joy. Well, this week I have been conducting a bit of a survey to find the voice of the people, asking them what is their most precious possession? And a follow-up question, what would they give to have that most precious of all things? The first answer from most people this week has been a desire for freedom from the coronavirus. I think we're all wishing and praying that things could go back to normal and that the virus would just go away or be eradicated. One person I spoke to said that they just couldn't think of anything that was so precious that they would be prepared to give up everything that they had to possess it. After giving this man a bit more time to think, he said, and he said rather sadly, I just wouldn't know what to do with it if I had it. A young man with children declared boldly that he would give his own life for his children. And a young woman said that she would give anything that the, that the world might find enlightenment and live in peace and harmony. And she went on to say that if she had the power, she'd send a beam of light into everyone's hearts so it could cleanse them of all hate and fear and pain and remorse. And she went on and on and on about it so that the world might experience freedom, peace and love. Well, to me, that sounded a lot like what Jesus, the light of the world, does for us when he is welcomed into our hearts. But I don't think that's what she had in mind. Let's now venture into the deep water of this question for ourselves. What is it that we're searching for? What is it that we would just give up everything to possess? The answers might be difficult to embrace. If we could have our heart's desire, or do we even know what that is? Perhaps it's our health, happiness for our children, or release from pain. Perhaps it's freedom, or peace, or love, or salvation, or to see God. Our heart's desire as Christians is to grow closer and closer to God, to experience an ever deepening sense of God's love for us and to know his salvation, salvation that brings profound and liberating freedom to the human heart. 
the kingdom of heaven. And after all, that is what these parables of Jesus are pointing to. The kingdom of heaven is bigger than this pandemic. And it's much more, it has much more to offer us than just a cure for COVID-19. The kingdom of heaven is like, well, it's like the parables say that it's like a mustard seed. It's like yeast. It's, it's like treasure hidden in a field and like a pearl of great price. And well, it's like many things. One thing is sure. The kingdom of heaven is the most precious gift that God brings to us. And perhaps it is a gift that we are still searching for. Jesus tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like a fine pearl. So precious, so valuable that all we can do when we find it is to surrender all our worldliness, all our possessions, and all that we are to it. In these parables that begin, the kingdom of heaven is like, the parable of the pearl of great price is different because the merchant is seeking, he is seeking the fine pearl. He knows what is his heart's desire, and when he finds it, nothing will stop him from achieving his goal. Our desire, our work and our strivings for the kingdom of heaven are all the more significant because we know that the kingdom of heaven is near. Sometimes people do stumble upon the kingdom of heaven. Instead, we know that we are what we're looking for. We know what the kingdom of heaven is like. We search and we wait knowing that the kingdom of heaven will bring us great joy and great peace. The kingdom of heaven, well, it's not some random event or accident. It has come near. It has been revealed to us in God's son, Jesus. How shocking it is to read at the end of chapter 13 of Matthew's gospel that Jesus is rejected by the people who know him best. Our relationships with friends and family are very precious. And what a terrible thing it is to read in today's gospel that Jesus' own friends and his family, the people that he grew up with in Nazareth, would not accept him. They took offence to him. It would seem that the world has taken offence to Jesus. His name is better known as a swear word than as the name of the one who can shine his pure white light into our hearts and bring us peace. All the difficulties of today's world, the great morass of hardship and distress and persecution, famine, nakedness, peril and violence. Well, it is nothing, says St Paul, compared to what God has in store for us. In the kingdom of God, all these sufferings, they don't amount to much because, as St Paul puts it, all things work together for good for those who love God. God's plan is that we are never to be separated from the love of God. People who have rejected Jesus and people who have no idea who Jesus is or that the kingdom of God is near, well, they do hunger for many of the same things that Christians do. They have said that they're prepared to give up their own life if it means their children will live. And many want freedom, love and peace. But they have no idea how to find it. They have no idea from where it will come. They have no idea where to search. The kingdom of heaven is like the pearl of great price. And for Christians, we know already what we are searching for. And when we find it, there are two possible responses. The first is to embrace it, to throw caution to the wind and let the life-giving spirit of God flow into us. In a world 
where the self is often seen as our first point of reference, it can be very challenging to let down our guard and allow something other than ourselves to determine our future. Such a thing can fill people with dread. Remember the response of the man who said he just wouldn't know what to do with it if he, if he had it. When some people find the pearl of great price, their reaction, well, is to run away, is to hide from it. It is to reject the beauty and the power of our salvation. The people of Jesus' day were so affronted by the imminence of the kingdom of God and by the awesome power of God's son, Jesus, that they turned away. They mocked him. They tortured and crucified him. When we find the kingdom of God breaking in on our lives, the challenge is to give up all we have so as to possess it. On a global scale, we are in search of that which God has planned for creation from its very beginning. We are part of those who are working for the coming of the kingdom of God. Our prayer is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our prayer is supported by the intercession of the Holy Spirit. Our prayer is supported by the intercession of Jesus Christ, who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God. It is he who intercedes for us. So let us pray. Dearest Lord, we pray that you might show us where to find our heart's desire. Guide us in the right path to find with you all that you have promised us. Help us when we go searching in the wrong place and call us back to you. And let us never forget the precious gift that is your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.